Welcome to another weekend of Punters Guide. Big weekends, both this and next, of course, uh, for us here at Betfred. With the Betfred Derby to look forward to next weekend. With the Betfred Temple Stakes taking centre stage. Ten races on ITV this weekend, Jason. You're a busy boy. Oh, yes. Plenty to get stuck into. And, uh, yeah, we've got the chance. I love it. Love the weekend up at uh, Haydock, especially when the speedsters come out, don't they? It's all about the Betfred speed this weekend up at Haydock. It's a bit of a low key start though. The 115, the Betfred uh, supports Jack Berry House. Only seven, sadly, go into post. David O'Mara's top weight, maybe the one to beat according to the market. Yeah, I suppose old to old Toon Loon has been running into form, if you like. Three spins so far this season, and probably going to be high on the list. When you're you're right, we start off, we've got 62 to 78 from official ratings point of view. The one that interests me um, cost 300,000 originally was Tiger Beetle goes for the Rimmel team. They had a tidy winner, Thapa VC at Yarmouth in the week. The team are in really good form. And it's one of those who was definitely going to improve, I think, for the step up in trip. They picked him up for 11,000. And one thing he hasn't had, quick ground. Looks like he's going to get it this time around. So the step up in trip for Tiger Beetle. Well, that goes off to a winning start then. Uh, we've got the stage in action at 150, the hell knock over two miles. Frankie in action on Rafe Beckett's Carzola. Yeah, I can remember Carzola's um, sort of improved through the grades, um, getting the job done fairly nicely last time off a strong gallop. I think that is absolutely key for Carzola. The max we can, back on quicker ground. We're going to see a better performance from him. And old Rishun, he didn't run too bad the other day in the Chester Cup, but undoubtedly the unlucky one in the Chester Cup itself had to be Law of the Sea. Um, had fair form over in Maidan. Franny Norton was sort of trying to get a little bit of room late on. Took back off heels. I know that he's dropping back down in trip and he is going to be on a quicker surface, but surely the track at Haydock is going to suit Law of the Sea down to the ground. Who do they choose? Whenever you see Buick book for one, you have to sit up and take notice. Yeah, you certainly do. So that's the hell knock then. One of the big three on handicaps of the We had the London Gold Cup uh, last, which also always develops into uh, a decent race. The Silver Bowl, likewise, over the mile. And again, Frankie and those famous Judmont Silks on Covey. Is that the one or are we looking elsewhere? It's funny, I, I saw Covey run um, on debut. I saw him win second time. Um, and all right, look, he, he definitely improving, but I don't think he's one of the superstars. If you've got a Frankel that's managed to win two and the handicapper has only given you a mark of 90, he's sort of got you pigeonholed a bit, doesn't he? You know, he's either going to make a massive step forward or the handicapper's got him right. I don't think he's one of the superstars, I have to say. Scholarship, I put him up last time. He was a bit disappointing behind Racing Brakes Rider at Ascot. They go up in trip with him. But the one for me, Defence of Four seems to be the forgotten horse. Looked really good winning on his race course debut at Ascot. Disappointed afterwards in a red-hot race at Sandown. And then they ran him on bottomless ground towards the back end in the Horace Hill. What happens? He's being gelded. The cruelest cut of all for him and on to a back on a quicker surface. Not seen too many runners from the Chapelheim team at the moment. This lad, they thought he was pretty good last year and he might have got in lightly. So defensive fault. Defensive fault then for Peter Chapelheim in the Silver Bowl <coughs> at the uh, Sandy Lane Stakes. This is a belt of group two. It's also interesting because we've got a little big bear dropping back to sprinting as we expected he would. If he comes good, his positive vibes will come then for Augusta Road in next week, you'd imagine, because they're both disappointed in that class. But I know that you're an Ascot uh, for that Royal Ascot Trials Day, Brad Sell. He was really well backed in the Commonwealth Cup trial. Fascinating to see how he gets on. Great little one, Neil. Hopefully the dead eight go to post. Yeah, it's a, it's a good pick up there because um, you have to say Cold Case was stripping really, really fit for his return. And that proved key, didn't it? He absolutely powered through the line. If you stop it, three out, Brad sells a short price favourite. Two out, Brad sells a short price favourite. The furlong marker, the flag had come out, hadn't it? And he just got very tired coming up towards the line. Saw Archie Watson afterwards and I said, is he OK? Did he pull up OK? Oh, he looked at me straight in the eye. He went, this is a top class horse. So Brad Sell is going to take a significant step forward from that. Can he beat Little Big Bear? 
when he actually ran at the Curra after he won at the Royal Meeting at Ascot, he was favourite to beat Little Big Bear over in Ireland. He went wrong. He had that injury. And of course, then we've got the new sprinting juvenile sensation. I think that Little Big Bear will be punted off the boards. And I think Brad Sell is going to serve it up to him down here over the six furlongs. I think he's the one to be with. Yeah, it's an absolute brilliant renewal of the Sandy Lane and a very good renewal of the Bedford Temple Stakes as well. We're looking forward uh, to this living the dream. We like to go off the front. Twilight calls his uh, side, Twilight Sun had his best day at the Merseyside track. But the market has gone towards the bottom. The three-year-old Phil is dramatised and the Platinum Queen in new silks for new connections. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a strange one. I know that she went through the ring for a massive amount, didn't she, um, the Platinum Queen? And so she turns up for Roger Varian um, in the Japanese colours. Now, dramatised, she was a rocket, wasn't she? Carl Burke has always said that she was an absolute superstar. And who they booked? William Buick down there doing eight stone nine. So it has to be taken seriously. I think, Matt, I've got to be allowed a couple here against the field because one of them is an enormous price. Um, you remember a claim when she managed to win at York for James Tate. She was the new sprint sensation. Nobody's going to beat her. She clocked a ridiculously fast time. I just feel that she went off the boil slightly towards the back end last campaign. James Tate, they haven't been lacking for fitness. And Royal Acclaim on the bounce back, she's had, what, 258 days away. But she, she's gone well fresh in the past. Neil Callan on board, certainly a positive jockey booking in the sprint division. They're all there and thereabouts, aren't they? Twilight Calls was second in this last year. We've got a few others existent. He didn't run too bad in this last year. He was fatter than me and you after a weekend at the hog roast when he ran at Newmarket the other day. He'll be primed for a really, really big run in here. Bound to come on significantly. I just looked at the prices. He's out there about 40 or 50 to one. And sometimes you think that is just the wrong price. He can easily get a slice of it. Royal Acclaim could be far too good, but I think Existent at huge odds can run a big, big race. Yeah, I thought you might go for him, keeping the faith and Royal Acclaim as well, one of the uh, fillies who look like they're going to dominate the market, suggests, in the Betfred Temple stage. That's Haydock done. We have got classic action, though, over the Irish at the core of the Irish 2000. against the second and third renewed rivalries from Newmarket and Royal Scotsman and High Royal, and of course, Aidan O'Brien and Kilmore with Donica O'Brien as well, also throw plenty into the hat. Yeah, it's a, it's a great renewal, isn't it? Um, you think that, uh, is it too obvious that the first or the second and third from Newmarket are going to dominate? On official ratings, they are. Um, Royal Scotsman, he's supposedly been working well. I'm not quite sure what happened to High Royal. He was out in the middle and he just leant across and seemed to give it away, didn't he? Maybe a bit of inexperience. I know that Kevin Ryan has said that he wants further down the season. So you know, those two are very, very tight. I have to say, the more I watch back Paddington's course and distance win last time in the Tet Trap, he was basically not fully extended to go and win. Someone was trying to crab his head carriage. I think he was so much under wraps and one with that much in hand that he never actually got down and really stretched. He's got course and distance form. I know that he's got about five to seven pounds to find, but Aidan O'Brien, the maestro from Bally Doyle, will not give this prize up easily. So look, is it the bounce for High Royal and Royal Scotsman? They're tight in the market. I think Paddington will go very, very well. Paddington, then, for the Irish at 2,000 games. Let's quickly look at York and Goodwood uh, as well, because we've got plenty of action there. Two races each in the ITV cam. One of these five long sprints at Cork, at Cork, at York. I caught my eye was Corker, of course. He bounced back to form at the track, finishing second at the Dante meeting. The market's latched on to him, but whose turn is it this time? Yeah, it, it is a bit of one of those, isn't it? And you can you can make cases for so many in here. Copper Knight, dangerously well handicapped, disappointed the other day. Mondamedge, he gave it away. Corker, he gave it away at the gates, didn't he? Absolutely flew home. I saw Carl Burt walk past me. Face like thunder when he got beat there the other day. But who also was in there and ran a stormer, wasn't given a hard time late in the day. Alligator Alley. How has the market managed to miss him? He doesn't normally fluff his lines at the gates. Completely gave it away. It was as bad a start as Corker. You've got two different riders. Danny Tudhope on board basically accepted it. Said, look, I can't win from here. It'll be a nice sort of return run down the Namesmire. That was the key as well. He's already 
produced some good form and had a pretty tidy winter. But Alligator Alley, he could be the each way play for the speedsters at York. Alligator Alley, even for the speedsters. What about the stayers, the Phillies in the Bronte Cup? We saw the George Strawberry Salts carry to victory on free wind in the Middleton Stakes. Kieran O'Neill gets the ride on Mimikyu. He's got a penalty. Yeah, as the five pound penalty. Um, look, official ratings, she's going to win, isn't she? Even if she's like half ready to go and, and, and come out there, she'll just outclass these. What we need to do, Matt, is delve in here and find something at a bit of a price. Now, for me, Moon Daisy ran in a really hot staying contest back in Ireland last time, gave it away at the Leeds and worked her way into contention. For me, I've looked at it back and back. She has been cried out for quicker conditions. They appear to have forgotten her a little bit in the market. Donica O'Brien sends her over, suggesting that she's ready to go. And with all the others in the lineup, basically playing for second and third place behind a red hot favourite, I thought she was the wrong one at an each way price. She stays well. She's going to appreciate the faster ground, being by Australia. The fact that Donica has looked here, he thought Group 3 will have a piece of that off a real big run last time. Interesting then. The Bronte Stakes looks to be going back to Ireland. Uh, to a good one to quickly look forward to as well. A listed contest at 1.30 over a mile and a quarter. Uh, Francesca Clemente unbeaten for John Thady Gosden. But good that James Horton can have runners again. Phantom Flight's no horse that we both like. Yeah, he's, he's a very, very talented runner as well. He's quickly gone through the grades, hasn't he? And um, he'll, he'll be fighting fit off what was a pretty decent return third last time. Back onto the turf. I think that's definitely going to suit him. El Drama, he's been a bit of a cliff horse for a lot of people, hasn't he? It looks like Jack Mitchell seems to have slotted into the Obey job, doesn't he? He seems to be riding all those from the Roger Varian stable at the moment. And he sits there, joint top rated on official ratings, and he's fit coming back from May Dam. But Francesco Clemente wasn't convinced he was a superstar until we saw that wide margin success 308 days ago. It saw him jump from a single digit rating all the way up to 112. Look, he comes under the absolutely could be anything banner. Gosden's team starting to warm nicely to their task, aren't they? What an easy opening for him. Listed company, he'll be climbing the ladder much, much higher later on. There you are then, Francesco Clemente. Last year's Wood Ditton winner, I think he was, wasn't he? Of course, Passenger may go for the uh, Betfred Derby this year's Wood Ditton winner. More to come on that in the coming days. The last race set that we're going to look at is, again, a good one. It's the uh, 205. 13 three-year-olds on a seven furlongs. Draw could be key. Yeah, not just the just draw. Um, you know, Goodwood on the turn there. I think from a, a pace angle, you have to have a look and, and see which way it's going to run. Now, you'll remember um, Urban Sprawl. May went flat out on soft ground at Chester the other day and was only reeled in in the closing stages. We know how the track rides at Goodwood. Joe Fanning is down there to ride for the Johnson camp. And look, there, there are plenty with recent winning form. Yakalep is off the back of a good win. Dark 30 was good for the Hannon camp when we saw him 35 days ago. And Ancestral Land had some really good juvenile form that hasn't shown it at his three-year-old so far. But Urban Sprawl, I think we're underestimating the Johnson runner. Saw him floating around about 9, 10 to 1. You could have many, many worse each way pokes than Urban Sprawl and Joe Fanning around this front running track. Yeah, I did draw in three and a team you are on your side at Goodwood. Uh, what will be your look at 10 races? Where's the best bet? I think that um, Brad Sell, I was so taken with the fact that. Um, you know, Archie Watson, straight after the race, said this is an absolute top notcher. He bumped into a super, super fit runner who got the better of him last time. He's bound to improve. And look, he's going to be a bit of value as well, taking on the Irish Raider, who's coming over to try and steal the Betfred sprinting cash. There we are then, yes. But hopefully he's going to stay at home with Brad Sell, the best bet of the weekend. Cheers to Jason, then. That's a run-through of the 10 races in ITV, the big ones this weekend, including that Betfred-sponsored card at Haydock. And throughout all of next week, we'll be building up to both the Betfred Oaks and the Betfred Derby. Make sure you stay with us for the big build-up to those two classics. <laughs>